Hello everyone, welcome to the United Stand, welcome to Sunday evening, hopefully you put your clocks forward and you're not actually thinking, why are we on at 7 o'clock tonight, it's 8, we've all put our clocks forward, happy Mother's Day to everyone out there, all you mums, hope you've had a great day, joining me tonight, first of all, top deck, Kev, good day mate, uh, everything gone okay for you this weekend, loving the weather in Manchester mate, I must say. Yeah man, check the tan out, look at me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he just I, I, did the halo light to tan setting. Don't let him kid you, everybody. No. <laughs> <laughs> listen, mate. Listen, uh, Manchester Sun. It, it, it just adapts to me. But I do want to say one thing. I've I've been at a birthday party today. A seventeen-year-old lad, my nephew Jack Murphy. I just want to say it was a really good birthday, and obviously a happy birthday to him and. Uh, as I will reiterate as everything, Manchester United are not ruining this weekend because they're not playing. So that's great. <laughs> that's it. I didn't even realise before we started the show, everybody, we are a full Mancunian crew tonight. I was just going to say that. Well, check that out. I didn't do it. We're going down one notch down to Wivenshaw right now to my man, Ricky. Ricky, good weekend, mate. Yeah, so far so good, mate. Yeah, I just told you off screen. I watched me. My grandson played football yesterday. Oh, he won four-one. He scored all four goals. So yeah, I, I, legend. Really, I don't, I don't need anything else to happen in the weekend. It's fantastic. Has he yeah. been listening yeah. to your tactics, Rick? Is that what it is? He, he <laughs> Yeah. Of course he is. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's the philosophy is in play. That's what's yeah. happening. Flying across to the other side of Manchester, uh, Beth. Ah, it's been a quiet week. We've just been talking then off camera. It seems like we've had it's been, been an age since we've been chatting, and we've had no football to talk about. Just what's happened off, uh, off the pitch, and a bit of international duty stuff. But uh, have you had and have you enjoyed your couple of weeks off from United's dress? I have been. You know, I feel like I've not really tweeted anything. I've not really been on much, but I've seen the news unfold. So we can all talk about that tonight. But yeah, it's been. I, I was thinking to myself, God. Feels like it feels like ages since I've been on here, but yeah, I'm happy to speak to all of you guys again. And yeah. football is back this weekend, and I do miss it a little, a little bit. That's it. That's it. Football is back. Decisions need making tonight. Is tonight we're going to be talking Pochettino. We're going to be talking Ten Hag. Decision needs to be made. What is happening right now? We've still got no manager in. There were lots of rumours going around about talks that have gone on. Who's impressed? Who's what not? Uh, ideas, plans for the future. I mean, Kev, I'll come to you first on this. We've talked about Ten Hag's tactics. We've talked about how well he fits Manchester United. We've been through absolutely everything. When can we expect this decision to be made? Because I'm not... I, I, I read we're looking at interviewing more candidates and stuff like that, but in a couple of weeks, mate, we're going to be into April and this needs to be in by then. When do you think it's going to happen, mate? Do you feel like we're going to get this in sort of April time? We actually are going to be prepared enough for this pre-season? Knowing Manchester United? Nah. They'll, they'll, they'll <clears> keep <throat> us tricking al trickling along, won't they? Because that's what Manchester United do. It's, it's a circus. It's all like everything for clicks and likes and social media, Manchester United will probably announce it when the time is right for them. But I, I, I've said before and I've stated, I think Manchester United, this is one of the things, the next manager is a massive thing and they, they should announce it as, as soon as possible. Uh, Ajax are out of the Champions League. They're, they're going to win their respective league. So it doesn't make any difference to Ajax if uh, if the news comes out that Manchester United announced that Ten Hag is the next manager. And that, that's the manager that I want to see Old Trafford. Um, and we've debated yeah. this many a times. Pochettino, nah, not having it, man. Not having it. Why, no. why would we want a manager that could potentially be sacked by Paris Saint-Germain? Not good enough, you know, to get that team into the latter stages of the Champions League. I, I, I'm, I'm not having that, man. I, I am not having it. I, I do not understand. We are Manchester United. I know that standards have slipped at this club and we, we're here. We debate it every week. Yes, we've fallen to a certain degree, but come on, man. Pochettino. Yeah. Why is he even in the mix? And I That's said it the true. other night on the last show that we were on, I said it is a tick box exercise. That's all it is. It's 
to make us as fans feel like, oh, Manchester United, <clears throat> that all they've done here is tick the boxes. Yes, we've interviewed every possible candidate. Come on, man. Ten Hag's the man. He is the man. He, he is like what Jurgen Klopp was at the time before he went to Liverpool. This is the next up-and-coming manager. And Manchester United cannot miss the boat. If they miss the boat on this one and they bring in Pochettino, I'm done. I'm, I'm honestly, seriously done. If United decide to bring in Pochettino ahead of Ten Hag, I will be... I can't even say I'll be at the stage where I'd be in total disbelief because this is the way that Manchester United is run at the minute. But if it does and it happens, I'll be like, yeah, I, I, honestly, I, I, I could not get my head around that, that Adam. I'd be no. totally in shock, man. I mean, Ricky, on this uh, new manager, do you feel like United have done this the right way in terms of how they've approached it with the interview process, taking the time with it? Uh, do you feel like... If Ten Hag is the right man, we should just go and get him now. Or should there be other people we're interviewing? I mean, we don't know if they have, mate. But all in all, Ricky, do you feel like we've done the process right? Do you feel the club have approached this the right way? It's a tough question, that, mate. Because, it, look, look, if they've, if they've already got a short list of people that they're going to interview, and uh, I only you can only either believe or disbelieve what you what you read in the papers or what you see what you see on the net, Um but uh, if, if they've already got a, a short list of people that they've already agreed to be interview and organised interviews with, uh, I do believe that it's the right thing to... Obviously, I don't know if that's true, by the way, but I do believe if they have, then they should interview everybody uh, before mm -hmm. making the decision. Uh, I, I agree 100% with Kevin. I'd give it to, I'd take Ten Hag tomorrow. I'm desperate for somebody like that to come in who's who's got his team playing in the way that I'd like to see us play, you know, possession-based football. Uh, I watched them play. I don't I don't watch them a lot, obviously, but I watched them when they were playing in the Champions League and they, they play some great football and it, such would he would get a better squad together playing for Man United, uh, managing Man United than he would managing Ajax. So I'd love yeah. to see Ten Hag get a chance at, at, at it. So mm -hmm. I, I'd take Ten Hag tomorrow. If, if they've got a list of people that they're interviewing... Hopefully, he's at the top of the list now. But I do think it's the correct thing to do to still interview the other people if that's the if that's already organised. Yeah. Welcome to the Members Club, Lloyd. Uh, anyone else who does fancy joining this uh, United Stand team as a member, drop down in the description below in this video. All the information is there for you guys. Welcome to the club, Lloyd. Uh, Beth, is Ten Hag willing to wait? That's probably the next best question, really, because we're hearing there, has, there is interest from another party in the Premier League. I've got to fear that. And then there's interest in Germany. Obviously, he suits he suits German football. I mean, like Ricky said then, like Kev said, Beth, we're all admirers. We've seen how uh, how he's handled this Ajax team, how he's rebuilt team after team, year on year. He's going to attract interest from other clubs. I mean... Ten Hag, you reckon he's willing to wait? I mean, if United really wants him, he probably would have thought they could have made a deal now. I have no doubt, obviously, that other clubs will be looking at him. He's a very up-and-coming coach, like Kev said, and he deserves the next step up. He really does. And the players that he's got playing that kind of football in the Champions League, I think, God, what he could do with, with like Ricky said, with either higher, higher quality players that Manchester United have the funds to go and get and have within the squad. We do have some very good quality players already that I think under Ten Hag could could go on and do really well. The thing is with Ten Hag is I do think he wants a Manchester United job. I mean, you've seen the stuff that's coming out in the papers that apparently he's not even that bothered about money, which I absolutely love. And you can't read too much into that. But the, with coming to Manchester United, we're so off track from where we should be as a football club. And we're probably at the bottom bottom of bottom of the barrel at the minute we're at rock bottom at rock bottom so if he comes in and he, he has this opportunity to build this club up again and really take it as his own and really be that manager and really make a name for himself I think a lot of people could be scared of this job which is understandable because the amount of criticism that comes with it and the high expectation but at the same time if he comes in and does really well it would be the best job that is that is taken and I, I feel like this is the job that he would want it, the Premier League's the best league in the world. You want to be managing there. It is a step up. And another team in the Premier League, I can't really see who it would be who, who's who's as big as us. 
I mean, all the top teams have managers that are settled in. So I think it is a matter of time. I think the board are weighing up their options. And I hope it does end up being Ten Hag. The only thing I can think of, which I was thinking about the other day, with the news coming out of Bruno Fernandes contract extension, surely Bruno knows the plan. Because why would you sign on to another five years without knowing what the plan is going to be? So I feel like maybe they have got a plan there. They've just not acted on that yet. But like you said, he's, they've got to act quickly because we don't want him to be snapped up by another team. But at the same time, does Ten Hag want this move so much? He's trying to kind of escalate it, you know, getting the agent out, speaking to the papers, pressuring into Manchester United and speaking a decision. So I, I, I have confidence it is going to be him. I'm just hoping that we get that announcement soon. But, you know, you don't want to disrespect Ajax, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, I mean, on that, Ricky, Beth makes a fair point now. I was talking about this the other day. In terms of the Bruno uh, contract extension, Ricky, you would hope that the next manager has had a say on that. Otherwise, we're in the boat again of uh, who is deciding that Bruno warrants a new contract when there's no actual manager in there who's going to actually have Bruno to use. So you would hope that a manager has been approached, talked about by the club via Bruno's contract negotiations. Obviously, they would have already been going on, but the worst thing would be that this club have just decided that Bruno earns a contract. It's not come for football side of things because there's no manager there permanently right now, Rick. There isn't a permanent manager in charge. And it's the same when we talk about people, uh, about us, obviously, but other clubs do do it as well. You know, they, they, they make signings uh, when they know that they're going to be changing the manager in the, in the you know not too distant future. Um, and this is the same sort of thing as you just said. The you know a five year contract for a player who we don't know for sure is going to be you know it, the, the cup of tea of the of the next of the next manager coming in. You know what I mean? So I don't. Uh, I don't get it. I really don't get it. I, I mean, a five-year contract for a player. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I know I've not, you know, for a long time, I've not been his biggest fan, but there's a lot of people getting onto it now of his, of how he, I mean, I've just spoke about Ten Hag, about um, <clears throat> possession-based football, lots and lots of passes, getting in round the bat. Bruno, to me, too many killer balls, which which obviously wastes the ball too often. And then, then you're under pressure because you've given the ball away. To be honest, I wouldn't have thought that he was a Ten Hag type of player. But, uh, you know, if they, they can't surely, I can't imagine that during, during just an interview process, they would ask that manager if he likes this player or if he likes that player and would you like us to give him a new contract? I can't see that holding any water whatsoever. If they were going to say that to him, they might as well just give him the contract as soon as the interview's finished, might they? This, so, yeah, yeah, really on that, Kev. Yeah, Kev, it's, like, it's like Vicky said there, Kev. That basically is the ultimate fear then, isn't it? It's like... The manager that is coming in already has zero <laughs> has zero say on who actually stays, who gets the contracts. I mean, first port of call is obviously the manager. Does this kind of say, no matter who is coming in, Kev, like Ricky was saying there, you wouldn't have expected him to say, oh, yeah, so what do you think of this? By the way, uh, you think Bruno should get a five-year deal? I can't see it happening. Like Ricky said in the interview, it would be, it would be crazy, but... Does it kind of show that this is where the club is going? Yeah, we're going to put these people in places that are going to take us to the next level. Like they said, these are the people who are going to be deciding on the players and not the manager coming in. Do you reckon, one, that is a bad sign? And two, do you reckon it's because Ten Hag is sort of like a coach, coach, manager style, improving players, building from within, that that is ideal for this football club and they're just going to make the signings and make the player contract extensions and whatnot? I'd say... It, Bruno Fernandes, if you, if, if you wait up and look at it, you could look and think, does he deserve a new contract? And I think personally for two seasons, he probably carried Manchester United. In this vein of form at the minute that he's at, and Manchester United as a club, and not in great three form. still got three years as well on this one. Exactly. And that, 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 that's why I'm going to hit him with the way that Manchester United are run at the minute is it's absolutely shambolic, shambolic. A player like Phil Jones, who, how many games he played? But to safeguard, even look at Jesse Lingard, players like this, Manchester United are looking at them as not as like football players, kind of, they're just looking at them as business assets. That's all it is. And they're looking and going, 
we need to tie them down. You could even say the same about Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba's not performed for Manchester United in what, five years at Manchester United? Yet everyone bangs on about, oh, Pogba, you know, he's going to leave on a free and that. So what? I, I don't care. He's not, he's, he hasn't put it in for Manchester United. And the only thing we can sort of feed off is this thing that, oh, but what if he goes to Newcastle and rips it up? What if he goes to, back to Juventus and starts playing well? I don't care. He's not done it at Manchester United. The only thing that Manchester United are, are interested in at the minute is kind of giving contracts out on the fact of these players that are marketable. And I'm not saying Phil Jones is one of them, but why would you give Phil Jones a new four-year contract at that stage? You know, he's done nothing, nothing for Manchester United. But the club is so fearful of losing a player on a free transfer that we offer this player 80, 90 grand a week or whatever just to keep him there, just in, in case we can sell him for, what, five, five million pounds or something? It is absolute crazy. The way that Manchester United is run at the minute, it honestly boils my bastard blood. Sorry to swear there, but it does, it does get me. It really does get me. We weren't run like this years ago. It was totally different. And now we're in a position where we're offering fringe players contracts just literally to keep them there for a name, just in case, oh, we might lose him or whatever. It, it's absolutely hideous, ridiculous. And we're getting to a stage where, what are we? We're supposed to be Manchester United. You know what I mean? The biggest club in the world. I'll say that as a Manchester United fan. But I'm sorry, <clears throat> standards are slipping big time. There's players there getting handed contracts willy-nilly. And it's not on. I'm sorry, I don't... I don't know what the rest of you think. I know you're all kind of looking at me there, but I, I'm at the point now where... No to look, look, mate. <laughs> honestly, I, I, don't, I, I don't know where, where to look. Per mate, you know, go on, Beth. I know you were to get on that there. Personally, for me, I completely agree with Kevin the fact where he says fringe players like Lingard should never got a new contract. Phil Jones never should have got a new contract. If we're not going to play Eric Bailly, he shouldn't have got a new contract. As much as I rate him, it's, he's not going to play. So why is he Why is he there? Um, there's a lot of players that have been given contracts and don't deserve it. It's arguable that even though we, people want Pogba to say, it's arguable he's not worth what Manchester United are going to offer him. That is very arguable. For me, the one player that does deserve a new contract at I, I, I'm in agreement with the Bruno contract, if, if I'm honest, just because I think he's exactly the type of player that I would want playing for Manchester United. Yes, he's not in good form at the moment, but like you said, he's carried us for, for years and I think there's so much potential there. And I think under Ten Hag, he won't be able to get away with the stuff in his game that I think is a massive weakness for him. And I think he could massively improve. And and I do think he's one player that he, 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 he always gives everything on on the pitch for me and and I really really rate him. I know people have different opinions but I, he's the least of his contract is the least of my worries with what's going on at the moment. Yeah, that's it. I mean it is I know everyone can lead their opinions on it. I can see people in the comments thinking oh, the Bruno contract just smells of Pochettino and that type of player. Like Ricky said there is he even a Ten Hag type of player? I mean Ten Hag I think could coach uh, most players on this planet we've got to ask the question as well it's like what players are going to respect Ten Hag because we've had a man come in there who's probably one of the footballing gurus uh, from around who's coached so many of the top ma top managers out there now in in Ralph Ranić. so this, this bunch of players you've got to question them as well when the new man comes in they're going to get on board talking about fringe players that Kev mentioned there uh, Ricky mate is I seen a post from United the other day, hard training, the usual United spiel from social media, hard at it, getting ready. Them pictures were one of Juan Mata, Jesse Lingard, and Phil Jones, none of who are getting in that starting lineup. Kind of tells you exactly where the club's priorities are at, mate, and how they think they can just spin it on us. But within that group of sort of players we've got there now, Rick. Can you see any of them being rekindled under a Ten Hag coming in? Because we've got a lot of players. We still have. You think what's on loan? Palestre, Ahmad, Martial, Donny van der Beek. You've got a lot of players still at the club. 
Do you reckon that there's any of them that Ten Hag, like what we've seen of Ten Hag and how he can coach players back, rekindle careers, like Kev has said as well? Do you reckon there's any of them there that might suit? Well, I mean, I'm obviously going to talk about the players that I like, but I think the players that I like are the type of players that he like people who look after the ball. Um, you know, keep it simple, pass it well. And, and I think I think Martial fits the bill. I think Donny van der Beek fits the bill. Um, probably too old now, but one, one matter would probably be gone, but one matter would fit the bill. If, uh, if, ten, if, ten, if Ten Hag was in charge two or three years ago when one matter was two or three years younger, He'd be playing all the time, I think, under, under Ten Hag. Um, so I don't look. At the end of the day, we've got we've got a decent sized squad. Well, we've got a, a squad that's too big, haven't we? Probably, um, and we're going to have to unload some players, and he's going to have to sign some players. So at the end at the end of the day, how many players is he going to realistically sign that are going to walk? If it is him, by the way, how many players is he realistically going to sign in the summer who who are going to walk into his team? Three, three at the most, perhaps. You know, so you, you know you, the team's going to be made up of players that we've already got, and it's up, up to him to decide uh, who, who he sees as the better players and who, who can play the game the way he wants it to be. Played. So it's going to be made up mainly. It's going to be, the team is going to be made up of players that we've already got. Obviously, it's not going to sign it. It's going to be stand. a massive clear out. There, there will be, there will be yeah. a clear. I don't, we got to, you got to look at this from Ten Hag's point of view, Beth, as well, because he wants to go to that next level. The next level is to go against, and I'm confident in saying this, four of the top five elite managers on the planet right now in this league. He's going to go and test his metal with a disgruntled Manchester United team, which is underperforming massively, with a bunch of players about to leave, who you would say are first-team regular players, this is the biggest challenge of any manager's career, to go up against that talent with settled squads, come into a Manchester United with the expectation, the way the fan base is right now, and the squad that's leaving, that is a job and a half. And if you were going to test yourself, this is the job, isn't it, Beth? It is. And you've got to think about it. When he first comes in, you've got to think of the circumstances of the Premier League. We... You, the top teams, which are Liverpool and City, which for me are, are miles above everybody else. I think Chelsea are up there, but Liverpool and City are on a different level. They have had managers who have evolved that squad over over quite a few years now. They've won trophies. Liverpool have won the Champions League and the Premier League. City have been the Champions League final. They've won Premier League and pre after Premier League, Carabao Cups. They've won stuff. They've got a settled squad. They know exactly what the play style is. They know exactly what they're doing. The managers get full control. They are a full ticking machine. And for Ten Hag to come in and suddenly expect to be at that level, it's not going to happen. It's simply not. Um, he's going to need time. This Manchester United team is, like we say, disgruntled, dis displaced, fragmented. Players need to leave. Players need to come in. They've got their squad settled. You also have Tuchel that's had Chelsea now for, for, for a little bit. And, and he's settled his play style. They've won the Champions League. They're on, they're, on, they're on their up. And I know what's going on with the club and the owners and stuff, but he's a good manager and he's got a squad playing the way he wants them to be playing. You've got teams around us who have settled squads, have settled teams, and like you said, have some of the best managers in world football. It's as simple as that. So it is a big job for Ten Hag coming in. He is going to need time. But if he gets that time to build a team and build a team, a team to suit his play pattern has full control of what's going on, and and you, it's not going to happen overnight. But he needs time. I do think he could compete definitely, and and, and I think that's what that's what happens. Like when 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 Pep Guardiola first took over City, they were incredible straight away. They were, but they're they're, they're at a different level now. And Liverpool, the, how much they've improved because yeah. they're stuck with that manager and and they've believed in him and, and they've got to that point. That's what needs to happen. You could see straight away they were doing something and you've got to be able to see that. Um, but that's what's going to happen. We're not going to compete straight away. You've got to have some time. But over that period of time, Pep might leave City, Klopp might leave Liverpool. Things are going to happen. So each club has their different time, but we can't keep going where we are, which is sacking manager, getting a manager in that shouldn't have got the job anyway, sacking them, disgruntled, dismantled squad, starting again from scratch because you're never going to get any consistency that way. So we, we need to build a team, a playing style and, and, and become Manchester United and, 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 and know where we're going and compete at the highest level, which is going to be hard, very, very, very hard. But yeah. it's a job that someone's got to take on and I think he's one of the best qualified to do it at the moment. 
Yeah, welcome to the Members Club, Simon. Uh, again, the second member of the day so far. Cheers for joining. Uh, Kev, going into, obviously, reactions on what's going to happen. We know that this announcement is close. I think we can all sort of read into everything, all the reports, what all the journalists are putting out there. Uh, <clears throat> the fan reaction, if this goes the other way, though, say, for instance, we do announce Pochettino, it's it's like then Beth said Ten Hag would would compete because we feel like the fan base would give them time. What do you think the reaction would be from within the United fan base now? Would they dare go against the oh, nearly all of the fan base that I've seen that doesn't want Pochettino? Would this club dare go against what they've seen and the reaction to Pochettino possibly coming in? Jesus, man. Honestly, if... if, if... If Pochettino <clears throat> is announced, there's a Smith song in there. I think Kev will lose it. I think Kev will lose it. <laughs> oh, never mind me. I'm I'm just thinking there's a Smith song like Panic on the Streets of London, Panic on the Streets of, you know what I mean, Moss Eyed, Panic on the Streets of... <laughs> there will be panic on, on the streets and I will be one of them people that will be like, seriously, I, I will not... Honestly, if Manchester United appoint... Pochettino as as the next full time manager of Manchester United, I will not be able to get my head around it at all. I I, I would be like, seriously, seriously, you've gone with what the one that's oh it looks great in the papers. It's almost like they put it out and then like oh the Sun, brilliant newspaper. Do you know what I mean? The Sun's <laughs> put in there that Pochettino will be a great fit for Manchester United. All these certain news media outlets have said Pochettino's the man. He's the man. He's not the man. He's not even the man for Paris Saint Germain. So why, <laughs> is it, so why is he the man for Manchester United? He is not the man for Manchester United. The man there for me. I've, I've, how many times do I have to say it? I am banging my head against a brick wall, man. I'm saying it is Ten Hag, right? And I am no football expert. That is just my own opinion. And I'm saying Ten Hag is the man for Manchester United. You miss the boat on him, right? And he stays at Ajax another year. Then you've got a chance that Guardiola might hang up his whatever blue nose thing. And then he's gone, right? And Manchester City would be interested in Ten Hag. If Klopp mm -hmm. ever left Liverpool, Liverpool would be interested in Ten Hag. So why are Manchester United not pushing the boat out now, announcing it and going for it? Why aren't they? Why aren't they? Yeah. Because, yes, yes. I <laughs> and I'll tell you something, man, Manchester City and uh, Liverpool, would they be pissing around going for Pochettino? I don't think so. No, they no. wouldn't, man. Not to Just need to... I just need to double check there. Did you stumble upon the uh, not the man for Paris Saint Germain, or was that when your repertoire, Kev? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was, went, I was just like, I went ping. Oh, there's a clip right there. Kev's on that one. I'm having it. Clip it up. But, clip it up. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That everyone was lapping that one up in the comments. That was a banger. That one, Kev, mate. But uh, moving on in terms of like Beth, I mean, Ricky. Players to come in, key positions, we all know where they are. It's pointless discussing which positions we need. We know we need that striker. We know we need the midfielder. The defender, well, we could talk about full-backs. We could talk about centre-backs. Ten Hag does have the two men in front. His full-backs do bomb on down the wings as well uh, to support. He likes that defensive shield in front of his defence as well. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of players to come in, again, I'm going to ask you about what we've got already. Ricky, in terms of that defence, because I know you like a good, strong defensive outfit. So I'm coming to you on this one first, mate. Do you feel like we need improvement within the fullbacks, first of all, to make this work? Because Ten Hag is going to need time. He's going to need to be able to build his own squad, build his own team. Do you feel like that is one area building from the back, as they say, is very important? Do you feel like we need fullbacks looking at more than anything else within this system? Are you happy with what we've got there now for Ten Hag style sort of set up? I'm happy with Luke Shaw at left back. More, you know, more than happy with Luke Shaw. Some of the stick that he's getting is, is beyond me. 
Um, I just don't get it. And, it, and he, I think you're going to talk in a bit, aren't you, about his comments for, when he came off playing for England yesterday? It will come up, yes. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I, I just don't get it. You know, I've seen one. I've seen a few people saying he's been off form. I don't see it. I just think he's a top top quality player. Every time I watch him play, of course, there's a couple of hiccups. But who doesn't have a couple of hiccups? He, you know, we ran into Harry Maguire against Liverpool, and it cost us a goal. Um, it did. Cost, it did cost us a goal. But the main problem against Liverpool in that game was that we was playing with four defenders and one in midfield and five up front. Do you know what I mean? If I've said this time and time again, if we had prime Paolo Maldini playing at left back that day, we still would have got beat 5-0. People don't see the main problems. They see tiny mistakes. One mi okay, it did cost a goal. But if we had more defensive cover, we wouldn't have ended up in that mess to start with. And then... I also see a, a couple of goals that have been, is it one, maybe two goals have been scored against us, where he happens to be a man who's played somebody on side who's coming in yeah. from the other flank. And uh, I, I use this, I've used this many, many times on here, outcome bias. People are biased by what happens in the end. You could, if you watched every United game back for the, through the season, you will see, I don't know, 20 or 30 times where the ball comes through and somebody's playing them on side, but they happen to miss. If they happen to miss, it gets forgotten about. So it's the fact that the ball goes to a player who happens to score that then the focus is on the player who was playing them on side. Do you know where I'm going with this? You could point the mm -hmm. finger at the other fullback and say he was playing him on side, but it, because they didn't score, it gets forgotten about. So, you know, there's... It, it, it's bound to happen. You're bound to play people on side once or twice. You're bound to make the odd mistake. But it's when it results in a goal that people bang on about it and it becomes, you know, well, everybody talks about then it's in social media. And I keep seeing this about Luke Shaw being off, off form. Every time I watch him play, I see a quality player. A quality player. So I'm dead out. And the other side, Juan Bazaka, Diogo Dallo. Dallo, probably the pick, the pick for me. A better on the ball. Um, look, we just said, haven't we? How many players is he going to sign? You know, if we could, we'd probably sign eight players, but I don't think that's going to happen. He might sign two or three players who get in the lineup. I would suggest that the two full backs uh, would not be, uh, certainly for me, if, 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 if I was United's manager and I could only sign two or three players, I wouldn't be signing any full backs. No, I'd settle for the full backs I've got. Ricky's happy with the full backs, Beth. That means we're moving central. Let's go with centre back and holding midfielder, possibly, for us right now. In terms of centre back, Beth, we have got plenty, of, <laughs> we've got plenty of them. Is yeah. there a combination you would have more than what you're seeing right now there? Do you think? Because we've talked about Harry Maguire. If Ten Hag does go on a high line, Harry Maguire is a big, big, big problem. Well, uh, Lindelof, Bay is a partner of Varane. Can Varane stay fit a full season? These are issues that we've probably got to look at and he will look at as well. I think we need a centre-back. I've been thinking about it. And um, first, I won't come on to Luke Shaw's comments, but anyone playing left-back, I think, has a struggle in themselves because they're playing with the weak centre-back next to them. And that's just... As simple as it is, I do think left back is probably a harder position in our team than right back due to the fact you are playing alongside Harry Maguire and you've got to cover for him a lot. And yeah, I think he's the toughest centre back to play with. But looking centre half wise, you think about and you think Lindelof and Varane for me is is the partnership. But then Varane is quite injury prone. I've noticed as of late, and again we've heard about another injury. Mm -hmm. And personally, for me. I just simply don't think Maguire is good enough. I'm not saying he can't ever be good enough and he can't work his way back into the team, but he just can't be our, our starting centre back if we're looking to win things and looking to go on and, and play at the highest level. So I would bring in a centre back. So we've got Lindelof, Varane, and then another centre back if, in case of injuries. Um, or possibly one of them goes to the bench, it's going to end, end up being Lindelof because Varane is just Varane. And, and another centre back next to him, I'd absolutely love Rudiger, I'm not going to lie. But whether that deal will happen, I don't think it is. Why would he go from Chelsea? to United when United are further behind. You could think about wages, but I, I'm, I think he'll end up going abroad or staying at Chelsea, but I think that's a deal that Manchester United should definitely be exploring. And there's there's other options out there, but we need a quick pay centre-back that that is also it, 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 at a very high level to partner for Anna Lindelof for me whenever each one's injured. And then you're looking at CDM, massively needed. And at the moment, I mean, I love Declan Rice. I do, but 
the amount of money it's going to cost. It's like, can we do that? Another alternative that I actually was reading something. I was watching the highlights for France, which, by the way, he was great. He was great. And I also was looking at this this Twitter analysis of Chiwamini and I, his stats are just crazy. Like for such a young player, and and I know it's not all about stats, but when you're playing in the CDM role, you you do have to look at him for for what he's doing. He's just I, I, he's on par with Declan Rice. I I, I'm, I think I, I've watched Declan Rice a lot more, so I've seen more of him. But this Chiwamini looks like a, like a very very good player. And it seems like something that we'd want. He's physical. His passing range is good. He go, he's aggressive into tackles. Um, and he can play out from the back. He's quick. I think he'd be a really good good one to buy. And you are looking at 60 million, but that can rise. You're looking at like 100, 150. Mm. So you are going to have to budget. spend. So for me, you're going to have to, I, I think, to cut a bit of money down, Chiuamini would not be, it wouldn't be like you, you're getting second choice. He's still a very good player. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guarantee this right now. If United did don't go and get uh, Chiumine, he would go on to Ricky's list of players that he likes. I guarantee mm-hmm. that Ricky will like this player. He works the way. And his past completion, he's off the scale. Be- Beth is right on that one. His numbers do suit. And he does know when. And does know. He knows when to play it. He knows when not to play it. And that is something that I do believe will help the defence as well, because that link up there, I've gone about it loads of times. Your goalkeeper, your centre-backs have to be in sync, but to move forward in transition, that player who's sitting in front of the defence is pivotal. He is key to everything. I mean, Kev, uh, on that midfielder, are you agreeing with Beth there? I know you like Declan Rice as well. He is a good player. He is going to cost a fortune. I mean, West Ham could still finish higher than us this season. And I suppose... Finishing in the league could really affect who we actually buy. I mean, Tillemans is another good player, but he wants Champions League football. That takes United out of the equation again. Mark was doing a video on Arsenal and United leading the race for Tillemans. I, I don't think we're even in it, mate. Champions League, these players are coming to the end of the career. Finishing this season in a certain position could be key to all of this, the, uh, Ten Hag, if, it is, if he is the man coming in. Because you're looking at, like what Beth said, two Amini there. He's going to want to take the step up, mate. And United is up, but not in terms of playing on the highest level at a big stage. No, and this is what these young players want to do. And fair play to them. I think we're at the stage where we... Manchester United as a club, we, we've gone through years of basically anybody, the, the actual name Manchester United people will want to play for Manchester United. We've got it's a generational thing now. People are through that. What who, who's going to what play for Manchester United? And they God forbid it could be the Europa Conference League or whatever the hell that is. I don't even know what it is, man. But you know, players could be signing for Manchester United to play in that. And I think players that are ambitious will be looking and swerving it, man. And wouldn't you yourself? You know, if you're highly driven and any walk of life, you'll be looking at it and going, do I really want to waste a year of my career playing in the Europa Conference League? You're not going to, are you? You want to be in the Champions League. That That is the, the main thing. I think it's the main thing that any player will want to be in. So, yeah, <clears throat> I mean... On the forwards, Kev, that we need we need a new centre forward. I think that's clear. You lose Greenwood, you lose Cavani. We do need another forward. I don't think United have got an out and out number nine in our ranks. I still don't class Ronaldo as an out and out number nine properly. Uh I do believe we need that that sort of player in there. I mean, is there anyone out there right now? Or like Ricky said before, is that midfield the key part, first of all, for for the spend that we're going to do this season. Can you see anyone coming through the ranks? Is there anyone for you that can come in Well, we're not in Champions League and actually build himself up playing? If we do get Conference League, does one of the youth players get an opportunity to play more games that way and build himself up within the United team? Because it could be a silver lining for some of the younger players to come through. If we don't get the big name, maybe someone like another Rashford or Greenwood comes through from the ranks like a McNeil. I mean, you uh, Garnancho could come through who congratulations to him making it into the Argentinian squad uh, to go and play, train alongside Lionel Messi he's, he 
it's no mean feat, and hopefully he comes back from that with a lot. But these players on the cusp, with us being in, say, Europa League or Conference League, could that be a blessing in disguise that we may be on earth another gem and Ten Hag could prosper that way, Kev? Uh, definitely. I think so. Okay. So, Fair enough. Do, do, you know, do you know what? I'm going to cut that one really short because <laughs> somebody just walked into the kitchen where I am now and then I literally missed everything you said. So then you're like, ask me the question. So All I, right. could try, I, I could try to wing this now. Yeah, it's actually better that uh, you just admitted to that one. But Ricky, I'm Ricky. Not, I'm not, I'm not, you're having to go through it all again for Kev, I'll, I'll take go it. Go for it, mate. Uh, yeah, it, it, could, it, it, could, it, could easily, it could easily happen. I mean, it's it, it could happen that somebody comes through the youth ranks who's good enough. And, you know, if we're in the, if we're in the conference or the Europa... Uh, they can give players a game in that in that in that tournament and in the League Cup, obviously. And then you just never know. Like happened to Rashford, he made his debut uh, in a was it a Europa League game? I think yeah. it was, wasn't it? Uh, so, think. So, you know, suddenly somebody could come bang out of, out of the you know out of the youth team, and and he could come good. But pinning your hopes on that is a different kettle of fish. You know, mm. pinning your hopes on that at the beginning of the next season is a completely different kettle of fish. We really do, we really do need a new striker. I think. I mean, Ronaldo was as good as he still is. He's seen his best days. He might be leaving anyway, if he, especially if we're not in the Champions League. Um, Cavani, I've read today that he's leaving. I've also mm-hmm. seen us linked with a couple of players. By the way, you must have seen the stories about Richarlison. I've seen plenty of Richarlison. Sammy Abrahams as well. Yeah, yeah but Richarlison's not good enough. He, he's not not good enough. Sammy Abraham. I've not seen loads of him, but I've seen enough of him to, to, to have me doubt. So I won't say quite as badly about Tammy Abraham, but I've got me doubts about Tammy Abraham. And Rich Allison's definitely not good enough. So we, we need to be we need to be looking higher than that. Um, yeah. I mean, Beth, uh, Ricky's man himself, Martial, is coming back to the club. Uh, he's a striker there, but things aren't going so well over in Spain for Martial. He's getting a bit of stick from the fans. I think he's finding what... Uh, real hatred from fans can be like because we know Spanish fans can be a little bit over the top. Uh, no disrespect, but he's getting, he's not liking it there at the moment. He is coming back to United, that's been confirmed. So, uh, Ricky said before, he thinks Martial could fit into a Ten Hag system. There is a forward there. Can, I mean, I'm sick of changing player from wing to centre forward. I mean, I just want a player to play in one position, Beth. We need an out and out striker. Mm a proper player to stay there and not be moved around. And I do believe him and the likes of Rashford have been victims of this, being moved from central to wide, to one side to the other. I mean, mm. all the best players, you know where they're going to play, Beth. And that's the key, isn't it? It is. But do you not think if a player's really nailed down that spot and they're at the best in that spot, they're going to stay there? Is that not on... Like, you think about it. That's, I, the, that's it. Not, not with us, no. Oh, that's what I mean. It's like, for example, it's it's. A, Is it clutching its draws a bit? You reckon? A lot of them are moving because you're not getting the best performances out of of them. To be honest with you, and and I don't think anyone's really playing playing that well. But I agree with you. We 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 do move the players a lot. When it comes down to Martial. What bothered me is the fact he was like kind of saying in interviews, hinting at the fact he wanted to get sold to Sevilla in summer, um, which is a bit like well that's not happened. Now you come back to Manchester United and we've all seen you saying you want to leave the club and that you don't want to play for us. So it's just like, you know how much I rate him and I think he's a good player, but that's the bit I don't like. Like you, you for, for me, he's lucky to play for Manchester United and, and, he, and, he, and you look every time you put on that shirt, you've got to kind of go out and, and give it, give it your all. And I hope when he comes back, that is what we get. Um, yeah. But the fact that this is happening with Sevilla now, it's happened with, Man United fans, I was never really in agreement with it when he got stick for being lazy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but it's happening in Sevilla. You've got to kind of look at what's going on, and I just hope if he does come back, he's utilised in the right way because there is a quality player there, and it would be a shame to miss out on 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 a quality player. So you've got to you've got to be straight with these players. How much game time are you going to get? This is how much you can get if you train well. This is where you're going to play. And this is your competition. You've got to be better than him in training. You've you've got to be better than him in games. 
and and you've got to kind of do it like that. No one gets just a starting place in the team every week. And um, Ten Hag needs, well, if it is Ten Hag, he needs to come in and and kind of set down the ground rules, be honest with these players, and get them to work hard for their spot in the team. But a lot of it is if buts and maybes as well, because is Ronaldo staying? If Ronaldo's staying, we're not yeah. going to go out and spend shed loads of money on a striker that's going to demand to start every week. It's going to be a younger striker that's willing to work alongside him or a Martial who's winning, willing to kind of go on the left but also play striker as well at times. And kind of he, he could come back and Ronaldo and Martial could share that role, it possibly. But if Ronaldo's going, Martial for me isn't enough. So you've got to go out and get a striker. So Deep, we need to know it. what's going on. Do you, not think, do you not think this, this is a sign of how Manchester United have, have, have fallen, right? I, I've been yeah. speaking to a Man City fan today who's like excited of the prospect that Manchester City might sign Haaland, right? And that I'm not going to say the piss in the league. You know, the, Manchester City are in pole position at the minute. They play a false number nine. They haven't actually got a recognised striker. And I said to him, I was like, at the start of the season, when Chelsea signed Lukaku, everyone banged on about the final piece, you know, the cherry on top of the icing of the cake and all that. Chelsea will win the league. He's the final part. I was like, I'm a United fan. Lukaku has played for United. I can tell you he'll play eight or nine games. And then after that, he switches off. But for the fact for Manchester City to be in this position now where they are winning the league, I think they will win it. If they sign Haaland... This is what Manchester United used to be. When we signed Rude van Nistelrooy, that was a fantastic signing at the time. It fitted the model of the club, the right age, everything, scored goals every, every single week. He was absolutely fantastic. And now we find ourselves where we're almost like looking, aren't we? And it, it, it's sad. I, I think it's really... It is really sad to look now yeah. and go, I, I don't f- personally believe, I'd love Haaland at United, but I don't think Haaland as a young lad oh. now will look at United as being an attractive kind of thing to come to. What? No. Come, oh, if you want social media likes, yeah, come to us. If you want trophies, yeah, go to well, City or Liverpool. This does this does lead us uh, straight into the next segment. I mean, I'm going to bring in Luke Shaw's comments now. Uh, I know we're going to bring them up. It's the right time to bring it now because going into the last few games of the season, only nine games to go, nine in the league, plenty of tough games involved in that. You need players who are on board and willing to show a little something. And we're talking about how the fans are going to react to how we finish this season. We do need a little bit of something giving back, don't we? We need something actually to cling on to uh, and go into the pre-season, into next season with a bit of hope. Uh, Beth, Luke Shaw's comments in the England game last night about feeling more uh, more wanted within the England setup than Manchester United. It's a happier place, so on and so forth. That says to me he's not really happy with what's going on. Maybe that be Teller's getting more game time or whatnot at United, but... You want players who are willing to sort of be up for the fight, at least give a summit towards the end of the season. That probably isn't what's going to adhere yourself to the fans because the fans have been behind him. We just heard what Ricky said there. You said yourself, we're all happy with it. I mean, you can only be talking about the setup on the training ground and behind the scenes again. Yeah, I was. Despite them comments, I think Luke Shaw and Tellers, I wouldn't be looking to improve that position. I think the boat, it's a good competition. I think Luke Shaw is the better left back. He, he still needs to improve and he needs to become more consistent. But we've seen the levels he's capable of reaching. And um, and it's to be honest, I was actually watching it like live and it came on TV. And I was really disappointed in what he said. I think it was honest, what he said. but And we want players to be honest. But at the same time, it's like, as a Manchester United fan, I kind of felt really like embarrassed and like, a little bit like, oh, you know what I mean? It's like, for me, it felt like what he was saying is, one, he's not happy at Manchester United, and you want players that are going to come out and when they get asked some questions, you want players that are going to say, yeah, it's not been good enough, but we can only blame ourselves. It's our responsibility. We're going to fight for the rest of the season to try and get Champions League football, and we seriously need to have a look in the mirror this summer, come together as a team, and, and work out where we're going wrong. We can't just blame the manager. We've got to look at ourselves. 
and 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 we've and we're sorry to the fans and we keep pushing forward. I don't really want a player to sit there and feel sorry for himself and say he feels more wanted in the England camp with Gareth Southgate when, by the way, there's barely any competition in that squad anyway at the moment, and and, and kind of sulk about what's going on in Manchester United. Yeah, the manager situation has not been great. But we've seen what's come out of Manchester United with players leaking stuff, the disrupt behind the scenes, like managers clearly not, players not getting behind managers from what I've heard. You can't say that's set in stone. And it must be frustrating as a player to have an interim and not know where the club is going. I get that. I completely get that. You want to see a direction. And I think Fred's come out and said about it, they don't understand what's going on. And that must be frustrating. But you've also got to take some responsibility yourself because his performances haven't been good enough this season. I know what Luke Shaw's capable of, he's top left back, but they've not been they've not been good enough along with a lot of the players this season. And you have got to take some responsibility for that. You you really do. And I and I just felt like maybe more responsibility should have should have been taken there. But I get his comments about possibly if he's regarding the manager situation, I get that because players want a direction. They want to know where they're going and they want to know what the, what they're looking for. But personally I thought I thought it was a little it was a little bit. I didn't. I didn't really agree with what he said. On Luke Shaw, Ricky. There, right? I mean, you're a big fan of Luke Shaw. You've just been talking about his game there. I mean, <clears throat> could something like this really put a player off his game? To him going forward, there. I mean, the mentality has to be right for the player as well. He's obviously not happy that he isn't getting game time. Or like Beth said, then it just there's just no direction for the club at the moment. Don't know where to go, and he's fresh on a contract as well. Uh, so he can't be upset with the money side of things or not wanted that way. I'm pretty certain he's all right with that, Rick. But in terms, this all has to come down to playing time then, Rick, doesn't it? And he's not happy with what the manager's doing. I think it does. This, this linked back to a little thing where I, I tried, I was uh, I was thinking of trying to cut in before or wait until Beth finished when she spoke about <laughs> if you're doing it on the pitch, and it was about 10 minutes ago, if you're doing it on the pitch, then you keep your place. And I said, I don't agree. I don't agree. We've, we've, for two or three managers in a row, no matter how well you play, you're out on your ear the next game. It's just crazy the way football is today. It's nothing like it was when I was a young man. You used to be able to name the, I'm not saying you can pick the exact same start in 11 every week, but you do need certain names. And we have got certain names, by the way, who are virtually guaranteed to play if they fit. I mean, how often, when I say virtually guaranteed to play, they're only missing two, three, four, five games a season. Bruno, for example, you know, Luke Shaw's that good. So I'm not surprised that Luke Shaw's throwing his rattle out of the pram. That, you know, for me, he's much, much better than Telles. And he must think that. And, and he's right to think that. So I've got no doubt in my mind that he's completely upset and bemused by the fact that he's not in the team. And I don't agree that his form hasn't been good. I'm not having it. He's a top, top player. We need, and when, you, when you're building a team, you need to look and you need to go, right, I'm happy with that position. I'm happy with that position. I'm happy with that position. And there's just two or three little tweaks here and there. And we need to get a settled team. Certainly need to get a settled back four. And Luke Shaw needs to be at left back. And forget you now your left back sorted. You know, forget that. Now let's look at the two centre backs. Who are the best two centre backs? And start playing them. How on earth Luke Shaw lost his place to tell us is beyond me. Absolutely beyond me. I mean, I'm all for players being given a chance. I think Teller's coming in was what brought the best out of Luke Shaw in the first place. <clears throat> I just feel like he could have probably approached, or probably said it a bit better. I mean, not wanted. That's probably the wrong wording more than anything. I think if he just said, look, I feel like I should be getting more game time uh, at the club as well, and his performance for England backed that up, then fair comment. I just don't think the words not wanted don't really... They don't really sit right, sit right with a lot of United fans, but not the only player, Kev. We know what these uh, Premier League players are like. Once international duty comes around, they turn into immortals. I feel like they can talk to absolutely anyone on the planet. Our Paul leader Pogba. of the pack, our leader of the pack in that is Paul Pogba, who now mm. says there is nothing left to play for this season. Yes, it was talking about trophies at first. I'm not taking it out of context before anyone goes in on there, but. The words, there isn't anything left to play for this season. For me, as a fan looking at it, I'm going, well, at least say, look, you're going to give everything now in the last nine games and try and get us back in the Champions League. And then maybe that contract situation where we're offering you more than anyone else on the planet 
may look a bit yeah. more prettier to you if you helped us out a bit. But the wordings again, Kev, it's not what yeah. you want to hear as a United fan with the dross that we've seen this season coming into the last few games. Makes you feel like you're throwing the towel in for the season, doesn't it? Exactly. Don't don't expect anything less than these bunch of clowns at Manchester United in a minute. It doesn't it, it doesn't even phase me. You know, years ago it would have. I'm I'm at the stage where I'm accept I'm accepting it now. I'm accepting the fact that Paul Pogba is coming out with his shit and saying, <laughs> oh, he, he is more or less saying United aren't good enough for me, and I've wasted five years of my career yeah. at Manchester United. And I'm looking for a move. And we all know he's agent. Absolute. Don't. I'm, I'm not going to yeah. swear. We know his agent. He's a clown. He's a clown. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and he's in control of Paul Pogba. He's a puppet on the string or whatever. And he's just dancing. Paul Pogba's just dancing to that. He's dabbing, doing whatever shit. And, <laughs> and I, honestly, that is modern day football for you. This, the same way. That, and you've touched on a great thing there about Paul Pog, uh, sorry, of, of Luke Shaw. I think that the things that Luke Shaw said there kind of strikes a kind of bell with my, Manchester United and the fans and where we are at the minute. The fact that he said that he prefers to play for England more than Manchester United. What, what does that say to you about United and where well, we in, are at the minute? In friendlies... But that is no when there's no pressure on you and there's no competitive left back. Did he actually say? No. Did he actually say I prefer to play for England? He didn't. He didn't, he didn't say that. He enjoys. He, he, he enjoys playing for uh, more for England than Manchester United. Mm. Well, this is it, isn't it? I can see, I can see both sides of it, but I think it was, it was Alex, I think Alex who said last night, wasn't it? What if Chilwell was fit? Another left back to fit, and he didn't have a free ride in the England team. Would he be first choice then, and would he be enjoying England as much then? Is, I think, is, I think, is he, think is he was. Not, I think he was talking about Chilwell at the start at the at the start of the Euros. I think Chilwell was fit, wasn't he? I'm sure. Yeah, sure. Was yeah, he was ahead of he was ahead of Chilwell. He was. Mm-hmm. So it, I mean, it, this for friendly, it, yeah, yeah. Go is on, it not yeah. thing? Just come off the back of an amazing best season. Mm-hmm. But, but it, that's it, and the Euros. Go on, Kev. Sorry, mate. Is it not a thing, right, that Luke Shaw prefers to play in an England team, which, fair enough to him, whatever, but that the fact that Gareth Southgate is a supposed yes man, right? Not disciplined. It's not going to give you any kind of instruction. Just go out there, play football, a bit like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was. Yet, when at Manchester United now, we've got a character in Ralph Rangnick who's come in, called out certain people, thrown down the law, said, it's my way or the highway, or you've gone. And certain people have reacted to it badly. And I think possibly one of them is obviously like the likes of Pogba, Martial, the likes of even Luke Shaw now. I think they've looked at that and they're like, oh, we've had a great year the last few years or whatever. And yet now when you've got somebody in with discipline... And we all hope that the next manager that comes in is going to be disciplined, come in, come in a new regime and all that. Maybe he's starting to get rid of, you know, it's the characters in it of these people Mm. now that are starting to show the ones where you go, well, are you up for fighting for Man United? Are you up for the fight? Are you not? Well, if you're not, I'll see you later. I saw something That's interesting it. today. It was like, it's, it's it's all the same players that Mourinho had a problem with back in the day, which yeah, well, I mean, look, it is a coincidence, but he's very old school, and oh, he's not the right manager for us. But he demanded standards, he demanded work ethic, he demanded all of this, and it's the same players he kind of he had a problem with Pogba, he had a problem with Luke Shaw, Martial a little as well, and I, I rate all of them players as players. I really do, but yeah. um, it's interesting. When you when you break it all down at the end of the day, every player we've talked about tonight, whether it be Luke Shaw, Pogba, Ateles, Maguire, Bruno in his contract, all these players have been a part of a squad that has failed the last five years, ultimately, for Manchester United standards. They have failed. Uh, I agree, everyone knows I like Bruno, but 
I don't think he should have got the contract until the new manager came in. Personally, uh, I'm all for the new deal. I do uh, like the way Bruno plays. I do believe that you need it needs to be worked within a system and worked right. But the point is, and like what Beth just said there, the issue with the players, it's the same old thing. And like what you then said, Kev, someone coming in upsetting the apple cart, the true colours are coming out of a lot of these players. And maybe it is the reset that everyone's talked about. Needed Maybe this kickoff needed to happen. And it might, we might have needed it to happen three or four years ago, but it's happening now. And the exodus that comes with it may be that silver lining. And the next generation may just flow through. You never know. But guys, we are out of time. We are done and dusted. Mother's Day is nearly over. Let's go and put the kettle on. Have one more brew and then get to bed ready for a working week in United against Leicester and the build-up to that all this week. Exciting stuff. Not. But, guys, <laughs> cheers, cheers for coming on. Everyone in the comments, your super chats. Kev, brilliant tonight, mate. When you was listening, superb. When you wasn't, just hilarious. <laughs> but cheers for coming on, buddy. <laughs> yeah, apologies. I, I made one mistake. Do not hold that against me. I know you're like, all laughing. Like, but... like I was talking about, about Luke Shaw. You made there you go. <laughs> Ricky <laughs> brought the football <laughs> point into Kev. So we'll let you off. We'll let you off. Bye, That's thank, it. thank you very much, Ricky, lad. Thank someone you. said someone someone said in the comments before the diversity of the panel has been great tonight. There's a point there. Kev was topping up his red wine and Ricky spun it into a formation and class of player. <laughs> Absolutely. It's what you need. That's what United Stand brings. But was, yeah. Ricky, cheers thought, for coming on, mate, as always. <laughs> Enjoyed it. <laughs> and Beth, uh, no Chinese tonight. Tea's already done and dusted. Uh, thanks for coming on, Beth. Yeah, I was going to say, I want whatever drinks. Kev added that birthday party. I think, I think, I think I them, but yeah, um, good show. Great to have the Manx show back. And thanks for everyone in the comments. It's been too long, but hopefully we'll see a decent performance this weekend. Yeah, guys, you need to start putting your comments and your petitions in because this is your man connection. I think we should make more of a show of this one. Obviously, Thursday nights what... are out next season, so we're going to have to think of a new show, guys. But yeah, bigger things to come, and hopefully, we can make some. Uh, we can make a future of this one. But it has been fun. What takeaway should Beth get next week? Put that in the comments as well. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you don't tee them up. Don't tee them up. Anyway, guys, <laughs> cheers for watching. Don't forget to hit a like on the way out. As always, uh, do subscribe to United Stand as well. Uh, just creeping up to 1.3 million. It's going to be one hell of a ride into the end of the season. It starts this week. And then what comes of that is everything that we just discussed. Then we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll have a manager by the weekend. You never know. But for now, guys, cheers.